the Dragonfly, a small research unit of the interplanetary Commonwealth with a crew of six, travels the distant regions of space. After visiting many worlds and exploring numerous planets, the research mission comes to an end. However, on the way home, there is no one more, one more task waiting for the crew. Despite the risk, Astrogator Novik undertakes the extraction of a rare and extremely valuable mineral himself. Novik gets the mineral, but at the cost of a broken leg and immense pain. The Astrogator's accident doesn't stop the crew from happily celebrating the end of the research cycle. It was a time of creating deep bonds and feeling unstoppable. Victorious, they set Curse home and go for a well-deserved rest in the hibernation chambers. Where am I? In a... my head. Marit? Anybody? Are you there? Koval? Marit? Hello? Is anyone there? Uh, Koval? Marit? Uh, uh, hey, this is Jasna. I was just with you. And now, I don't know where I am. Or how I got here. I've got a splitting headache. Does anyone hear me? Base, do you copy? Are you there? It's probably nothing serious. No damage to the suit or bone structure. Just <clears throat> this headache. for a moment my receiver's dead but the transmitter it may still be working damn it I've lost my beacon where is it I have two solid hectobars in the tank that's enough for several hours supplies which would suggest a quick recce or was it just the end of the mission just like i thought nothing i'm on my own the beacon can't be detected either if the past me hasn't failed the present me and let's hope she took notes are we on readers three doesn't ring any bells and my crew have no way to tell me so i report that i have no recollection of this planet the last thing i remember hang on we've closed the research cycle we, we were already in hibernation flying back is my blackout a side effect of metabolic depression that would be bizarre. For some reason, our crew split into two groups. The first one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? Both. 
both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. I don't usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. That's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Leading to... Right! I was heading straight to the camp. He must be somewhere near. Give me a sign! Send up a flare, the probe! Anything! Okay. I'm gonna head to the camp, but I'll be keeping an eye out for you. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh, I sound like... I need to stop doing this. I'm looking for something that resembles a dog. A specific structure, which does not resemble any canine. another object oh, which also doesn't match oh focus bingo i found the dog We have the first one. I need one more. An object I call Needle. What is this one? Something you definitely don't want to comment on. Right. It resembles the eye of a needle. I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. Let's go then. But I am still curious as to what is over here. see our ship you're not leaving without me are you I'm in a canyon which doesn't make it easy to navigate oh, I hope the data is trustworthy and you're close by hmm. I think that's my rope it didn't just fall out of the backpack so apparently I didn't have time to collect it before I Something on the tracker. I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon. Could be. <sighs> huh. There's 
there's water on this desert planet. Warm. Oh, getting warmer. Hmm. Or another liquid that did not allow the biosynosis to form. Won't be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration, as we all remember. Third rule. I was about to. Already awake. Good. My body might be awake, but my brain is still in the fridge. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. Clearly your sense of humor was first awake. Now, try to get up, slowly. But Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. Here, take it and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. Always the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Murray. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. Kovel, will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Kovel, it's not a good time. Yasna, look for yourself. This is not the right planet. You shouldn't be walking yet. Kovel, could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Crew. Astrogator. The bathing chamber in 50 minutes. This can't be good. Guess we'll find out. But first, here, hold on to it and remember. In small sips. The Dragonfly crew is awakened from hibernation in emergency mode after the ship came across close to a mysterious planet, Regis Free. Despite their evident concerns, Novik doesn't immediately reveal the details of this unexpected mission. Yasna, the Dragonfly's astrobiologist, wakes up all alone, disoriented, and amnesiac in an unfamiliar place. She hopes that someone is still receiving her messages despite the connection issues. Yasna discovers that she is on a desolated planet called Regis Free. Wanting to learn more, she heads to nearby camp of her crew. interested in what is this okay I understand you are not interested
found it. Look for me on your trackers. We cannot be waiting here. We need to press on. Okay. Moving on. Also, no reason to dehydrate yourselves. Outbursts and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just too idyllic. There's no dust in the air. The sky is clear and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren. On some planets, such storms last for several hundred days. I hope it's not one of them. Bottoms out of sight. Best not to overthink it. to go yes but let's see if there's a way through here meters in a straight line I, I see you can you hear me I just need to get down from here hmm, but I would like to see is over here first maybe it will be an easier way down great a route that won't break my neck. <laughs> oh. I hope. <sighs> okay. I'm at the bottom. <coughs> Looks better from here. I'll be with you soon.
when a challenge arises, Yasna handles it with due caution and prudence. much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But I don't remember it. Did, did I black out again? Closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself. There is no way we can get to the camp from this side. Or maybe. It's just hidden. I remember you, Regis' third satellite. Astrogator, sir, crew? Dr. Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. Uh, wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes. And yet we have detected no traces. No, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. 
air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. In the words of paradise, no radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone is weak. You don't see how thick the polar ice caps were, Doctor. I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet, potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae. But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could be because of hard radiation. I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought intolerant evolution occurred here. And that would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Hmm. Anyway, we'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame. Married. Do you have the geological analyses? It's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun's seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense, but I assure you that Regis III is not without worth. With all due respect, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. As always, Dr. Koval, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? Oh, the Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Well, I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. The steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate, concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean, together with its crew of almost a hundred men, professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. Uh, they are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched, but the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Coble. All right, but where do we stand in all this, together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff? Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. <sighs> Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. There's no time to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Cobra. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop. And you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, if you feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program Artie to collect samples? Of course. Marit, Krauter, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you too. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator! Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis III, if any. Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am 